Welcome to this video on the topic of simultaneous equations. In this video, we're going to have a look at some methods we can employ to solve special types of equations we call simultaneous equations. But before we do that, let's review the concept of an equation. Now, equations with single unknowns may be solved through rearrangement. If we turn our attention to the equation we see over here, x plus 2 over 3 equals 2, what we find is that if we rearrange this equation such that x becomes a subject, we can deduce the value of x that holds both the left-hand side and the right-hand side in balance. Doing this, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to remove the factor of 3. So we're going to go times 3 times 3. This is going to yield 6 on the right-hand side and x plus 2 on the left-hand side. Now, our next step is we want to move all of our variable terms on the left and all of our constant terms on the right. So we're going to subtract 2 from both sides. And therefore, it's going to reveal to us the final solution for x, that being x is equal to 4. Now, if this is the algebraic representation of x on the left here, we can represent it visually or graphically using our Cartesian plane on the right. All we need to do is we locate the value of x equals 4 on the Cartesian plane. So in this case, it's going to be 4 and 0. And then we simply draw a line that intersects at this point. And thus what we have is the graphical representation to this algebraic statement we have on the left here. So x is equal to 4 for all values of y. As a result, what we find is that Equations with single unknowns typically have a definitive result. Now in contrast to equations with definitive results, what we also have are equations where there are more than one unknown. As a result, what we find is that there are multiple solutions to the equations that we have. So consider the equation y equals 2x plus 1. Doesn't matter however we rearrange this equation, we always find that y is always dependent on the value of x and x is always dependent on the value of y and as a result we never get a definitive value for either x or y so rearranging this we could put this in terms of x such that x is going to be equal to y minus 1 all divided by 2 or we could even put this in general form in such a way that it would appear as though 2x minus y equals negative 1. So it doesn't matter however we rearrange this, we can never get a definitive result. Furthermore, all of the arrangements or all of the forms that we can put these in are all simply the same relationship. Now expressing this relationship in its graphical representation, what we find is that the solutions to these equations we have on the left here are going to be any point that lies on this line. So simply sketching this, every single point that this line cuts through is a solution to this particular equation. So when x is equal to 0, y can be equal to 1. When x is equal to 1, y can be equal to 3. When x is equal to 2, y is equal to 5. So what we find is that all of these points are solutions to the equation. So what we find is there's no real definitive solution in that there's no single solution, rather there are multiple. Now with this in mind, there is still a way in which we can get definitive solutions when we have more than one unknown in single equations. Now in the case that we find ourselves in a situation where we have multiple unknowns and just as many if not more related equations, then it is possible to find definitive solutions to the unknowns. So there's definitive solutions for x and y. Now consider the two equations we have over here, equation 1 and equation 2. Let's say that both of these equations are related or they're from a similar system, however their definitions are different. What we find is that using these two related equations here, we can actually get a definitive solution. Now the way in which we're going to achieve this is we're going to graph both of these equations and then we're going to look at the point in which the two lines intersect. So both of these are arranged in slope intercept form, so I'm just going to go ahead and graph these the best I can. So for equation 1 it's 2x plus 1, so it's going to cut at 0, 1, and there's going to be a rise of 2 and a run of 1. 
So every two we go up, we go across one. So here's our first line. This is number one. And then we must graph our second equation. It's going to cut the, or its y-intercept is going to be a positive six. So two, four, six. So it's going to be zero, six. And then for every three we go down, we go across one. So down three, across one, down three, across one. Now, as mentioned, the point at which these lines intersect is going to reveal to us the solutions or the definitive solutions for x and y. So what we can see is that these lines intersect at x equals one and y equals three. So what we see is that the point of intersection reveals the solution for the variable x and the variable y. Now one of the issues you might see with this particular method over here is that the solution itself is only as accurate as we can actually graph the particular lines themselves. So because this lies at a really neat location here, so one and three, it's quite simple, but imagine if the answer was irrational or well, imagine if it did not align to the grid, what we'd find is that it would be very difficult to deduce the values. So although this is a solution to being able to solve these equations, we're limited by the accuracy. Now one way we can get around this is by using the calculators or the graphing function on our calculators. However, I'll show you that a little bit further down. Now what we'll do to practice this a little bit is we've got four examples. We've got A, B, C, and D. Each of these containing a system of equations with two unknowns. What we're going to do is we're going to solve for the unknowns X and Y using the simultaneous graphical method. Now for example A here, we have Y equals three over two X minus one and Y equals minus X plus four. What we're going to do is we're going to graph both of these equations and then solve by looking at the point of intersection. So just labeling my axis, I've got positive y and positive x. Then graphing the first one, we have an x or we have a y intercept that negative one, so down here. And then we have a rise of three and a run of two. So every three I go up, I go across two, up three, across two up three, or I can go down three, backwards two, down three, backwards two. Now the way in which we can get the most accurate line drawn on this graph is by mapping between the two points that are furthest away. This is going to minimize the amount of error we have when we're ruling our line. So I'm going to line my ruler up and make sure it cuts through both of these points the best I can. Done. Now the next point is we're going to go y equals negative x plus 4. So we're going to cut at positive 4 and we've got a negative gradient. So for every one we go down, we go across one. So down one across one, down one across one. And that's what you can see is this is equation 1, this is equation 2. And the point of intersection is going to occur at what appears to be location 2 and 2. So the solutions for this equation are x is equal to 2 and y is equal to 2. So this is example A and how we do it graphically. Now to be able to verify this on the calculators, what we're going to do is we load up our calculators and then we're going to go into graphing mode. So we click 5, after which we're going to insert our equations in slope intercept. All right, now to graph them, we're going to press F6. Now, as you can see, the graph on my calculator is not actually showing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press F2 to go into zoom, then I'm going to press auto. Hopefully what will happen is the graphs will become visible. Now it still hasn't done it properly, so I'm going to go zoom, and I'm just going to zoom out. I'm going to keep zooming out until I see what I want to see. Basically what I'm looking for is the point of intersection. Now, since we're close, rather than zooming out, I'm just going to scroll across using this D-pad. And thus, what we can see is a nice point of intersection here. Now, to actually deduce the point of intersection, what we can do is we can press F5 for G-solve, and then we can click on F5 again for intersection. 
calculator will do its thing and then looking down the bottom will say x equals 2, y equals 2, thus confirming the original results we saw when we had graphed them manually over here. So this is a way in which we can do it using technology. Going down, we have question B. For B, we have equation 1 as y equals 2x minus 4 and 2y equals x minus 2. Now graphing the first one of these equations, we're going to do it using the slope intercept form. So we're going to go down to negative 4. So using this guy here, we're going to go negative 4 and mark it out as 0 and negative 4. Now once again, if I wanted to, I can simply look at the equation seen over here and say, all right, with that gradient, it's going to go up to cross 1. But I'm going to show you now a method you can do to graph them more accurately, so getting a second point. What we can do is we can try and deduce the location of our x-intercept. Now doing this, I'm going to write equation 1, and I'll write out y equals 2x minus 4. Now the x-intercept is always going to occur at the loc location at which we cut our x-axis like this in which case it's going to be a condition when y equals 0. So to find the x-intercept, I'm going to go let y equal 0 and then solve. So the x-intercept is going to happen at x equals 2. So that's going to be this location here. As a result, all I need to do is fit a line that's going to cut through the x-intercept and the y-intercept. Now going for the second one. What you can see is that the second one is not arranged in slope intercept form because there's a 2 in front. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide both sides of the equation by 2 and then I'm going to pinpoint the y-intercept. This is going to be at negative 1. And then I'm going to solve for the x-intercept. So this is going to occur at x equals 2. And we graph equation 2. Now what we can see is that the intersection is going to occur at 2 and 0. So as a result the values for x and y, x is going to be a value of 2 and y is going to be a value of 0. Now verifying this using our technology, I will turn these two equations off by pressing F1 then I'll input the two new equations. So it's got to be slope intercept form. So I've got to go y equals 2x minus 4. And then the second one's going to be half x minus 1. Graphing this, it seems to cut where we're expecting. We'll go g solve, intersect. And lo and behold, the value is x equals 2, y equals 0, confirming our results seen over here. Moving on to c, we have y equals x plus 1 and x equals 2. So something a little bit different. Now, graphing the first one, it's y equals x plus 1. So let's go, uh, we'll say that this is going to be the y-intercept. And we'll say it's at 0 and 1. So double spacing here. Moving on from there, we need to get the x-intercept. So we'll go let y equal 0. So the x-intercept is going to happen at x equals negative 1. So that's going to be here in this case. Graphing this. Thus we find that subsequent line. Now the second equation we have is x equals 2. So it's just a single result here. So x equals 2. So graphing this, we are going to locate 2 on our x-axis and it's going to occur here. So what we can say is that this is going to be 2 and 0. Fitting a line, we find that the intersection is going to happen at x equals 2 and y equals 1, 2, 3. As a result, the solutions to this equation are going to be x equals 2 and y equals 3. Checking this with our technology, I'll turn off these two equations. And then I'm going to type in x plus 1. Alright, now putting in equation 2, 
uh, we have it in the form of x equals something as opposed to y equals something now to put in x equals to what i'm going to do is i'm going to go down to my free space here y6 i'll go down to f3 for type then i'm going to change it from y equals to x equals putting this in it's x equals to so i go x equals to rough now what you can see is we have the vertical line here to be able to solve this we're going to G-solve and click intersection. It's not going to give us the result. So rather what we need to do is we need to go in, click across one, then go to YCal. This will enable us to put in a value for X that we want to solve for. Putting this in, what you can see is the cursor lies on the point of intersection here. In which case X equals two, Y equals three, which confirms the value that we were able to deduce from our graphical representation here. All right, now going down to the final one, we're going to take a shortcut with this one. What you may have noticed with this equation over here is that to find the solution, all we needed to do is sub in the value of two into this equation. Now we're going to do the same, but without the graphical. What I'm going to show you is a tool called substitution. What we're going to do is we're going to get equation one and we're going to go y equals x plus one and then we're going to get really trippy and then say let y equal equation two which is half x minus one as a result we're going to get half x minus one equals x plus one now moving all of our constant terms or constant terms to the right and variable terms to the left we're going to go plus one on both sides. This will reveal a half x, x plus two. Then we're going to multiply both sides by a two to get rid of that coefficient in front of x. So I don't like adding fractions. So this will be x, two x plus uh, four. Then we're going to move 2x to the left by taking 2x. This will reveal a half or minus x plus four. And then we're going to multiply both sides by negative one, thus yielding x equals negative four. Now finding the value for y, all we need to do is we'll go y equals x plus one. And this is from equation one. I'm then going to say let x equal negative 4 and therefore what we can say is that y is going to equal negative 4 plus 1 and therefore y is going to equal negative 3. Verifying that this is indeed the solution to the problem we're going to go in we'll change our calculator back to y equals so that seems to be the sensible thing to do and we'll turn those previous two functions off Typing this in, it's x plus one, followed by a half x plus minus one. Graphing these, scroll across. And then we're going to go G solve intersection. And lo and behold, the solutions to this problem are indeed minus four and minus three for X and Y respectively. So therefore what we find is that we can solve systems of equations using this graphical method here. Or if we want to take the shortcut and go for the algebraic method, which is also happen to be quite an accurate method as well, we can simply just put the two equations together and therefore we, fall, we solve for the equations of we solve for the values of x and y. So in summary, what we had a look at in this video was we wanted to have a look at how we can solve equations. More specifically, we wanted to have a look at how we solve equations when there are multiple unknowns and multiple related equations.